Namaste. Welcome. What are mudras or energetic seals? Are they merely an external practice? Or do they have some deep energetic origins? Mudras or energetic seals, we practice them so we could confine and direct the flow of the prana or the subtle force to specific points of our body for meditation, uh, for general uh, health and wellness. Uh, the most common mudras are those which we do with our hands where we connect our fingers and each one would have different functions as well. Uh, but when the mudras happen spontaneously, you know, we don't have to do them at will, at all. The body will just have its own way of doing the mudras. Yeah? And this is really very true, especially for people who are so energetically absorbed. Yeah? I could fully relate to that when I do my meditation. Yeah? When I reach that point of high absorption already, I could feel yeah, my hands will just perform the mudras you know, without me doing them. Because it's the way of uh, our energy flowing through our system that the body will make room for the energy flow. And thus, the body moves in distinct ways. And in the hands, the hands we hold so many energetic pathways here called nadis. And the nadis become too energized as well, stimulated when the energy is flowing abundantly through our system. Thus, they form seals. But when they happen organically, they are a bit more crooked, not as perfect as the ones we see in the picture. But they look similar. But the feeling is so subtle. Uh, you won't even know that your body is doing that. All right. And the tongue as well, the tongue mudra that I just showed you a while back, is called Kachari Mudra. Uh, I didn't learn it as a separate component. It just happened to me one day spontaneously. I was meditating and I just felt this Kundalini energy pass through the backs of my throat. Although I've been feeling that already, but that particular session was so profound that I needed to find out where it was coming from. So I resurfaced a bit, I released my meditation a bit, and yes, I just felt my tongue was already inside my throat. Right. I didn't know how it went there. I didn't know how it happened. Right. And I just explored from that experience. And the realization is really very beautiful. Yeah. When we learn it from experience, the practice becomes safer. Yeah. Catch a remote right externally. It looks complicated, but it's very easy. Yeah. It just happens effortlessly. Yeah, the tongue will have its own way of doing that because it's our body's way of making room for the energy to flow. And the tongue, especially during the advanced stages of the meditation, since the kundalini energy rises up, yeah, the tongue will make room for her so she can, she can ascend inside the brain. And that's the um, external manifestation of the energy flowing. The tongue, the neck, the eyes even, they will make room for the energy to rise inside the nervous system. Yeah, even the hands, yeah, even the hands, the feet, yeah, and the hips. Um, we call them uh, kriyas, yeah, the involuntary movements or the spontaneous actions of the body. You know, when a person meditates, especially people who are energetically absorbed in the meditation. Yes, so the external mudras, the ones we do with our hands, they are safe practice yeah, to help us and aid us in our meditation. Yeah, so there are energetic seals we practice using our hands. My favorite is when we fold the uh, index finger under the thumb like this, like you're forming yeah, a sign of okay, and then the thumb now will connect with the middle finger and the ring finger. So you're going to form the seal. It's called the Apana Vayu Mutra. Yeah, this one. Right. And when we practice this mudra, 
Yeah. And when we meditate upon the hips, sending our awareness there, the breath down the hips, it will really aid us in connecting the body, the mind, and the breath. Yeah. The, the mind, the power of the mind is so important. Really, even if the bandhas are already strong, even if the kundalini is flowing, if the mind is restless, if the mind cannot focus, it will not happen. So whether you're using the bandhas or whether you're just breathing through it, when the mind is involved, it's really very possible. Really very possible. Aside from the mind, definitely, the spine would have to remain open because the spine is the main pathway of the energy. When the spine is blocked, for example, if we are slouching or if we are crooked in our meditation, then the energy will not be able to flow. Thus, the spine would have to remain open. And there are many hand gestures. You can just read about them. For example, you know, for some reasons, you can't do the hand seals. For example, you're injured. Yeah, there's one mudra that you can practice as an alternative. And I, this is called the Shin Lock or the Shin Mudra. It's not really the Jalandhara Bandha, but some adjustment in the upper regions of our neck, in the head, in the Shin, yeah, will help us in flowing the energy freely through our system. All right, so let me angle so you can see. Yeah. So the Chen Mudra is when we lightly fold the head downwards, yeah? And as you do this, the Chen will lightly hug towards the throat, all right? And then the breast bond is the spot, the, the, the tops of the chest, uh, um, really higher up the collarbone. So you're gonna breathe this in. So the upper chest rises up, and then naturally the shoulders will just suspend behind you. Good, and then the head, lightly folds downward and you're folding the chin lightly towards yeah the throat so inhale right. so you don't clench it you, know, you don't squeeze it it's more of that organic again all the external manifestations yeah they all come from the inside so when we breathe through them it happens slightly yeah so breathing in like that yeah, so it's natural, you know, it's natural when you inhale the chest up, the upper chest up and up, and then you allow the head to lightly fold like you're looking towards your heart. It's very light and it's very open and soft. So that's the Chen Mudra. And, and the Chen Mudra is universal in nature. Yeah, so whatever goal or purpose we have in our meditation to flow that force or the pranic force abundantly through our system, the Shen Mudra really helps. Right? But if you want, for example, to be more specific, yeah, just certain values, yeah, then you can do the hand seals. Yeah? But not everyone would be able to do the hand seals, for example, if you have injuries in the hands. Right? What's important is the spine and the breath. They need to flow. And this, the power of the mind is really so important. What we think, you know, if we do it uh, earnestly, if we really focus on it, the body will just do it. And the body will adapt. The body will function as well to serve the purpose of the meditative mind. Yes, uh, mudras. Um, they are both external uh, practices we can do with our hands, but the deeper ones, the Kachari Mudra, uh, don't learn them as a separate component. Just allow them to happen. That's the beauty of it. When we allow the deeper you know, energetic practices in yoga to happen you know, organically, it's a safe practice. And when it happens organically, it means you are ready. We are ready to welcome whatever energetic side effects or implications or um, realizations that you know, eventually would have to um, face and manage in our practice. You know, whether it, it is the body, the breath, or even the spirituality of it, when everything happens through experience, we understand it meaningfully. And there's no harm, there's no danger. Uh, there's really no danger. And since we're ready, you know, whatever you know, we will encounter through the practice, you know, we are on top of it. You know, we are in control of everything.
And so even the Kachari Mudra, for example, if it happens organically, yeah, then yes. So we don't have to actually learn it. Yeah? So the body will just accommodate yeah, the flow of the energy. And we just surrender. We just surrender to the flow of the energy. And yeah, we experience it. We enjoy it. We share it. And we celebrate it. Until the next time. Namaste.